praises to the Most High. Shalom, Shalom, Most High Christ. Bless Officer Marshall. Uh, we're coming to you uh, to bring forth this class called Presumptuous Are They. Presumptuous Are They. The reason why uh, we're doing this class is because this is a, a, a common issue. This is something, a spirit that we all are going to have to deal with, man, woman, and child, because there is a difference in a lot of times the level of understanding that we apply. There is a difference. And in us organizing a nation, it means that we're actually organizing God's government on earth. But a lot of times uh, our people like disorder, dysfunction, disarray. And we choose that over getting in step with what the Lord is really doing upon the earth. Uh, but what we misunderstand, and we got, uh, the Negro hates order. And a lot of us, even in this truth, are still acting like Negroes. We, we do what is necessary to destroy the order that God, to destroy the order and discipline that God is trying to put back on the earth through our, our vessel, right? So this spirit of uh, being self-willed or presumptuous, it's a spirit that comes in various seasons. You see it during promotion time, before and after. You you see as, as some brothers get various ranks, they, they tend to lord over the people. And then because they're of a new rank, they become out of order, even in that rank. Typically jumping over their leadership and trying to uh, tap into other things. So we got to go to the scriptures. I myself have been corrected on this thing. And when I went to the scriptures, I said, yes, that's me. I'm evil, and I need to fix this thing. And if I don't fix it, I'm going to destroy not only what God is doing on the earth, but I'll also destroy my own soul. So that's how we all have to look at these scriptures. So we're going to look into the spirit of being self-willed and being out of order. I definitely pray that this uh, class exposes our sin and redirects us to live by the order of God. So let's get that Psalm 19 and verse 13. Matter of fact, I want Psalm 119 and 103. 103 and 104. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 103. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Go ahead. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Go ahead. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Go ahead. Therefore, I hate every false way so through the precepts the laws the statutes the commandments of god we get understanding and through getting understanding our discernment should increase we should increase in understanding of how to recognize what is truth and what is evil what is false ways of living let's get psalm 19 and verse 13 this is the book of psalms chapter 19 verse 13 go ahead keep back thy servant also, from presumptuous sins. So the Bible says, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sin. We're going to actually get the definition of presumptuous sin. Let's get that real quick. What is presumptuous sin? Let's put that on the screen. What is presumptuous sin? Read the definition of presumptuous. Presumptuous of a person or their behavior, failing to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. Ooh. Permitted or appropriate. Permitted or appropriate. So when it deals with our behavior, our behavior is governed by the laws of God. But when we fail to observe the limits, when we fail to observe, that's just like you driving down the street. You got 25 miles per hour speed limit school zone so there is an appropriate speed when the light is flashing to show you school is in session children may be walking uh this is the limit when these conditions are in place if you're going through a school zone that's designated 25 miles an hour at 65 miles an hour you could endanger those people in that environment that's why when you go through that and that police officer is there, he throwing them blue lights, there is no excusing that ticket. You knew, you saw, you were warned, you did that which was inappropriate, and now you have to be judged by it. So let's go back to Psalm 19, verse 13. 
This is why we must be kept back from presumptuous sin. And that's why we have the laws to forewarn us. Read that again. Psalms chapter 19, verse 13. Go ahead. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Go ahead. Let them not have dominion over me. Let not those sins have dominion over me, Lord. We should not want to be sinning from an inappropriate, sinning at all. But definitely, you, we're going to see later how those sins get brought to our attention. And how through that presumptuous nature, we actually disregard those warnings. Read on. Then shall I be upright. Then shall I be upright. Read. And I shall be innocent from the great transgression. I shall be innocent from great transgression if I keep myself away from presumptuous sin. If I acknowledge the laws of God, I will not fall into a great transgression. Read on. Let the words of my mouth uh -huh. and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So if the Lord is going to be our strength and our redeemer, he's given us the commandments to follow that he can redeem us not being made uh, not being found with spot or blemish. That's why the commandments are given to us that we do not find ourselves in presumptuous sin. Let's get 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Go ahead. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation. So the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. We all have temptations. We all have lusts. We all have affections. We all have things that entice us. They're, they're, they're easy on the eye. They are distractions unto us, though. These temptations will have us committing presumptuous sin because those temptations already have laws against them. So what we have to be mindful of is not giving ourselves over to those temptations by continuing to follow God's laws. Read on. And to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So the Lord wants to deliver us from that thing. He wants us, us to, uh, uh, to receive salvation. He doesn't want us to be judged with uh, uh, everlasting death. Read the next part, though. But chiefly. Them that walk after the flesh. But mainly those that walk after the flesh and not after the spirit. Read on. In the lust of uncleanness. So their temptations are all unclean. Their lust and their affections, their mindset is always rooted in uncleanness. Read on. And despise government. And they despise government. They despise government. Read on presumptuous are they so those that despise government those that are walking in the lust of their uncleanness they are presumptuous read on self-willed self-willed but we didn't create ourselves who created us the most high god he gave us a purpose and with that purpose he gave us laws to govern us that we would be delivered from all manner of evil and all ways of temptation so keep reading they are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. So not only are they presumptuous and the, presumptuously set in their sin, they're also self-willed, doing their own will rather than the will of God, but they're not afraid to speak evil of those dignities. So there's two things I want. Let's get 1 Thessalonians 4 and 8 because it says they despise governments. If we're finding ourselves in an organized nation. This nation is not made up of men. This is this, this not something put together by men. These men are being moved and inspired by God. So this order is of God. So get that. First Thessalonians 4 and 8. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 8. Go ahead. He therefore that despises, despises not man. Go ahead. But God. So when you despise in government, in this truth, understand that you're not despising the men that are leading your congregation. You're not despising those soldiers or those officers. You're not despising the bishop, the deacon, and the captains. No, you're despising God. Understand that. So let's also go over to self-will. What is the will of God? How, how do we determine the difference between being self-willed and God's will? Let's get that. Psalm chapter 40, verse 8. Psalms chapter 40, verse 8. Go ahead. I delight to do thy will 
Oh, my God. So we should delight to do God's will. Read on. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So when we delight to do God's will, we will be doing God's law. And that's how God will keep us and deliver us out of temptations and reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. That's how God is going to make a clear cut divide from those who obey as opposed to those who disobey. There's a reward for the righteous. There's a reward for those who are in their evil. There's a, a, there's a recompense for the self-willed. So let's get an example. Let's get an example. Let's go to Numbers chapter 15, verse 22. We go to Numbers chapter 15, verse 22. So that we can get an understanding of presumptuous sin. What, what does that look like? Someone may ask that question. What does presumptuous sin look like? You got that? Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and read. Numbers chapter 15, verse 22. Uh-huh. And if ye have erred. If I have committed any error. Go ahead. And not observed all these commandments. So. Error comes from not observing the commandments. Read on. Which the Lord has spoken unto Moses. Go ahead. Even all that the Lord have commanded you by the hand of Moses. So in this scenario, Moses is the dignitary whom the Lord has chosen to set order amongst his people. Read on. From the day that the Lord commanded Moses and henceforward among your generation. Read on. Then it shall be. If ought be committed by ignorance. So if sin be committed by ignorance, read. Without the knowledge of the congregation. Go ahead. That all the congregation shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering. Go ahead. For a sweet savor unto the Lord with his meat offering and his drink offering according to the manner and one kid of the goats for a sin offering. So right here we're seeing how there are some things that we're going to learn or we, we, uh, or sins that we commit ignorantly. The Lord displays his mercy unto us when we do certain things ignorantly. But when we sin ignorantly, there is going to be someone there to correct us, to rebuke us, to reprove us in those ignorant ways that we have fallen into. That's, how, that's another way that the Lord delivers us from temptations. Instead of allowing those, uh, the, that ignorance to linger, we have certain people in our lives to correct us and root that thing out of us. Read the next part, though. And the priest shall shall make an atonement for all the congregation of the children of Israel. Go ahead. And it shall be forgiven them. It for shall be forgiven them because they, they sinned ignorantly. They, they had no foreknowledge of what they were doing and why they were doing it. Read on. For it is ignorance and they shall bring their offering a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord uh -huh. and their sin offering before the Lord for their ignorance, for their ignorance, for their ignorance. But what's the opposite of ignorance? Read on. And it shall be forgiven all the congregation of the children of Israel uh -huh. and the stranger that sojourneth among them. Go ahead. Seeing all the people were in ignorance, seeing all the people were in ignorance. They had no foreknowledge. Read on. And if any soul sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. Go ahead. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly. Go ahead. When he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord to make an atonement for him. Uh-huh. And it shall be forgiven him. It shall be forgiven. Because there are some times where, you know, people are coming into the body. And there are certain things or certain spirits that they don't know they have in them. We... As those who have uh, a little more experience or have been around, we should display that mercy one to another. The same way God gives us mercy, and in this case, he gave a, a specific sacrifice to make atonement for that ignorance. We have to look at how the Lord was dealing with us in time of old and deal with one another the same way. That's charity. Correcting one another, rebuking one another. That's a means of dealing with the ignorance and, mo and, and, and rooting that thing out. A lot of people don't know how to keep the Sabbath. A lot of people don't know how to keep the Passover. So it's within those first few years, there's going to come some correction to make atonement. That is, correction is a part of atonement. Because if you don't know, you don't want to continue making that a habit. Because then that habit, you're going to start to justify it. 
if we're not justifying our lives based off the word of God, it will become a, a, a habit of evil. So the Lord is, is giving us mercy that we may give one another mercy. But read on. Ye shall have one law for him that sitteth through ignorance, uh -huh. both for him that is born among the children of Israel. Go ahead. And for the stranger that sojourneth among them. Go ahead. Verse 30. Now we're going to get into the opposite of ignorance. Read on. But the soul that doth that doth ought presumptuously. So the soul that sins presumptuously, failing to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. That's presumptuous sin. If you've already known what you're doing and yet you still bypass it as if it's not a law of God, there is a judgment for that thing. Read on. Whether he be born in the land uh -huh. or a stranger, the same reproacheth the Lord. The same reproacheth the Lord. Basically, in that spirit of yours, you hate God. You despise God's government. Read on. And that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Read on. Because he hath despised the word of the Lord. He did what? He hath despised the word of the Lord. So you have despised the word of the Lord. Therefore, you're despising God's government. Then you're going to despise God's dignitaries that he, who he has chosen to lead his government. You might want to watch your spirit because the Bible just said that soul shall be cut off. Read on. And have broken his commandment. And hath broken his commandment. Read on. That soul shall utterly be cut off. Utterly. Utterly be cut off. Meaning you might want to watch your step. The next one might be bloody and, and, and to your detriment. Read on. His iniquity shall be upon him. Go ahead. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the seventh. So now here we are in this scenario. And a lot of people have a lot of questions, especially coming in. Well, why did this dude get put to death? When you read above this situation, it's going to show you that there's a difference between ignorant sin and presumptuous sin. So now we're going to get into the scenario of this man who was picking up sticks on the Sabbath day. We're going to look at his scenario and his judgment, and we will know where he lined up with God. Read on. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. So they don't went through the levels. They said, oh, shoot, we got to take this dude to Moses. We don't. We, there's some confusion here. Read on. And they put him in war. They had to put him in war because they was like, we don't know what to do. We don't know whether to let him go or, or something about this just don't seem right. Read on. And they put him in war because it was not declared what should be done. It to wasn't them. declared because they, they, was, they were looking at the situation and they couldn't justify. They couldn't say, well, he should be put to death. He's in sin. We don't know. There was some confusion there. Read on. And the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall surely be put to death. Go ahead. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. So now, while you're at home thinking about this thing, did he sin ignorantly or presumptuously? For the Lord to tell Moses, stone him with stones that he die, did he sin ignorantly or presumptuously? If you said presumptuously, you are correct. He was doing something against God's laws, and he knew what he was doing. He knew what was not permitted. He knew what was not appropriate. So understand this about God's judgment. And this is how we know it's all of God. When the most high deals, he's going to bring forth proper judgment. You can be mad at man and how man judges, but when you understand how the spirit of the Lord moves, that judgment that usually comes through man is of God to begin with. You just, you just have a problem with governments. And we got to deal with that. Keep reading, though. And all the congregation brought him without the camp. Go ahead. And stoned him with stones, and he died. Go ahead. As the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel. Read. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments uh -huh. throughout their generation. Go ahead. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So after this man got put to death, the Lord said, let me go ahead and give them and establish a new law, a law amongst my people. I want all of my people to wear borders of blue with upon their fringes. 
This is when the law of the fringes was instituted. After a man presumptuously sinned, committed sin against the word of God, despised the word of the Lord, and the Lord said, I want them to have a means of remembering my commandments. Read on. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. Go ahead. And that ye seek not after your own heart. That you do what? And that ye seek not after your own heart. That we don't become self-willed. Read on. In your own eyes. Go ahead. After which ye used to go a horn. Because with our own mind, our own will, our own eyes, we want to do what we want to do for the purpose that we declared it. But the God, but our God gave us the commandments that we may be governed, that we may understand how to love him properly, how to fear him and give that up due respect. Read on. That ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. Go ahead. I am the Lord, your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord, your God. So. We've just gone through a situation to show that there's a difference between ignorant sin and presumptuous sin. Presumptuous sin is what we need to avoid. But presumptuous are they that are self-willed, despise government, despise and speak evil of dignity. So now we're going to get into speaking evil of dignities. We're going to get into the speaking evil of dignity. And we don't even have to go that much further than where we already are. We're in Numbers chapter 15. Guess where we're going to go? Numbers chapter 16, where that spirit is still amongst our people back then, and it's still amongst our people even till this day. So let's get Numbers chapter 16, verse 36. Numbers chapter 16, verse 36. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Go ahead. Speak unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning. Go ahead. And scatter, and scatter thou the fire yonder. Uh huh. And they are hallowed. So Eleazar is a part of the, the lineage of Aaron, the high priest, those who are given certain designations to make sure that atonements are made for the people, to set the people in order, teach the people how to serve God. So this is a part of a government. Read on. The censers of these sinners against their own souls. So of these sinners, that's going into your Korah and Dathan. Korah and Dathan. And, and everybody, all those, uh, I think it was 250 princes, they were murmuring against God's chosen leadership. They were murmuring against those men. But then God brought forth judgment on them too. They were speaking evil of dignities, and the Lord brought forth judgment. Read on. Let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar. Uh huh. For they offered them before the Lord. Uh huh. Therefore, they are hallowed. And they, sh and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. Go ahead. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers, where, wherewith they were, they that were burnt and offered, mm -hmm. and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar. Go ahead. To be a memorial unto the children of Israel. Go ahead. That no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron come near to offer incense before the Lord. Because that was de designated for the seed of Aaron. The lineage of Aaron. But read on. That he be not as Korah and as his company. Go ahead. As the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. So the Lord set up the hand of Moses. He also set up the lineage of Aaron to do a certain work within his government. But then when we despise that government, we'll try to put ourselves into that position thinking that we're equal. Oh, we, we, you're going to see the word of the Lord is sure. When he designed something a certain way, there is no changing it. From that, he's going to bring forth his glory. But if you go against it, it will bring forth your shame. But read on. Verse 41. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses. So the Lord is setting up a memorial that all the congregation be able to see it and see what not to be like. But the first thing the congregation does in their mind to show off their spirit is they murmur against Moses and against Aaron. These are still the same men that came and brought them out of the land of Egypt, right? The same men that stood up against Pharaoh because the Lord told them to. But yet the people have forgotten all the miracles that came by the Lord through their hands. 
They forgot all about that because their spirits were evil. They despised government. They're presumptuous. Read on. Saying, ye have killed the people of the Lord. So they said, they said to Moses and Aaron, when, when the Lord did a new thing in the earth and uh, I ain't want to. I ain't want to go into the teeth. Whatever. The earth swallowed Korah and Dathan up. Mo Moses and Aaron wouldn't have been able to do that with a, a, a shovel and a pail at all. But they murmured against Moses and Aaron as if they did it. No, the Lord did that thing. The Lord swallowed up Korah and Dathan for their evil. But read on. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. Uh -huh. And behold, the cloud covered the it. The what? The cloud covered Read it. Read on. And the glory of the Lord appeared. So you don't think Christ was up there in that cloud looking at the evil that was amongst his people? He's looking at that thing. He's seeing the presumptuous nature of his people. Meanwhile, before this, Moses was standing in the gap for the people. When the Lord wanted to destroy them and start over, Moses said, no, Lord, I, I got, I, I, I'll take that. Lord, you're more merciful than that. So what we don't understand about speaking evil of the dignities, speaking evil of that government, those who are in the government of the Lord and serving righteously, these are still the same men that the Lord is going to put to save your life. But you hate God. You hate God's government. You hate yourself, actually. So let, let's continue to prove that point. Read on. Verse 43. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation. Go ahead. That I may consume them as in a moment. Go ahead. And they fell upon their faces. So he said, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get up from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. So the Lord said, all right, they want to talk against my government. Watch what I do. Read the next part. And Moses said unto Aaron, take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar. Go ahead. And put on an incense and go quickly unto the congregation. Hold on. So wait, stop. These men of the Lord are being talked evil about by the congregation. The Lord tells Moses, I'm about to go kill them on your behalf. Kill them for you. And Moses said, no, Lord, looks to Aaron and said, Aaron, we got to make an atonement for the people. These are the types of leaders that the Lord wants in his government. M leaders that are always thinking and concerned about the well-being of the people. And that's why the Lord chooses those spirits, too. But then that's also why in the midst of some congregations, the nation of Israel at large, we despise those who are actually standing up for us that have our best being at, in, in their mind. They have the resolutions for our problems already thought out. They just need honorable, chosen, able men to go out and execute to save our people. That's why Korah and Dathan weren't chosen. That's why it was Moses and Aaron. Read on. And make an atonement for them. Go ahead. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. So the wrath is going out from the Lord, but Aaron, I need you to go take this sense out there and save the people. Read. The plague is begun. The plague is begun. Read on. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And ran into the midst of the congregation. Read. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. Go ahead. And he put an incense and he made an atonement for the people. He made an atonement for the same people that were murmuring against them. Read on. And he stood between the dead and the living. Uh-huh. And the plague was stayed. So just imagine. Y'all, hey, I know most of us, we done been to uh, uh, public school, some of us, right? Been to public school, a fight break out. Somebody get, you got the bloods and the, uh, 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 and the crips on one side or the bloods and the folks on another side and everybody fighting and, and you see that uh, the SRO, the student resource officer, jump in the middle and stop it. That's what Aaron did. He stood in the middle of the dead and the living. When he brought that sensor in, that's where the, de the plague stopped. He brought it and stopped the plague of the Lord. So we got to understand that these men that are set up in government, the Lord's government, are actually meant to deliver our souls. And we better be careful how much evil we're speaking against them. Because a lot of times that evil gets set, gets set in us to speak. 
or set up in our minds or set up in the order that we disregard because of correction or because of we're trying to exalt ourselves. But be mindful. These same leaders are meant to save our souls. Finish that off. Verse now, 49. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700. Beside them that died about the matter of Korah. So what we're seeing is through evil, the Lord, we came out of Egypt with 600,000 men. But little by little, through much despising of government, much evil, the Lord just kept dwindling down the numbers, so much so that only of that generation, two went into the promised land, Joshua and Caleb. We better be mindful not to speak evil of God's government. So uh, let's get that. Without government, the people are not able to learn from the perspective of godly experience. Moses and Aaron were meant to teach the people and, and, and gu guide the people in learning God more properly. So let's get that. I want that in Titus 1 and 5. Titus 1 and 5. Titus chapter 1, verse 5. Titus chapter 1, verse 5. Go ahead. For this cause left I thee in Crete. Go ahead. That thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. The order things that are wanting goes into the things that are lacking. There are certain things that we lack as men and that's why we have leadership over excuse me we have leadership over us to teach us how to be better men to guide us in the scriptures for the sisters there are certain things that the sisters are lacking as mothers as sisters as wives but when we have that uh, uh that leadership that mother in the body to teach them how to take care of their children, how to love the husband. Those things are made right in the Lord's government. But the Lord establishes those people in the congregation for that reason. But if we despise government, you're actually showing how much you hate yourself because your self-will has only taught you how to hate yourself. We got to come out of that foolishness. That is a Negro mindset. Read on. And ordain elders in every city. So in every city, there, in every little sanctuary, there are elders that are set in place by the Lord himself. Read on. As I had appointed thee. Go ahead. If any be blameless. Uh-huh. The husband of one wife. Go ahead. Having faithful children. Go ahead. Not accused of right or unruly. So God even has requirements for the type of people that he puts into leadership. That he grants his mercy to, to allow them or afford them that opportunity. There's, there's criteria. What we got to learn to do is trust in the Lord. Read on. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed. So the men of the Lord cannot be self-willed. What we were just reading in Numbers 15 and Numbers 16, as the Lord spake it, Moses did it. As Moses gave it to his government, they did it. They cannot, there's no place for being self-willed in the Lord's government. We cannot have that mindset. It will destroy us in the process. The Lord will destroy us in the process because he's not going to tolerate that thing. He is setting up a royal priesthood. If we don't want to be a part of the royal priesthood, keep on being presumptuous. You'll find out what the judgment is. But in the meantime, learn to keep God's order. Learn to follow God's order. Learn to trust in God's order and build your faith upon that thing. But read on. Not soon angry. Not soon angry. Don't get upset just because you get corrected. Don't be upset because you're told that that is not going to work at this time. Wait on your ministry. Read on. Not given to wine. Not given to wine. Go ahead. No striker. Go ahead. Not given to filthy lucre. Go, not given to filthy lucre. Not just doing things for the, the vanity. Not just doing things to get money. That's what you see in your Christian churches. These pastors are only doing it for the money. But they'll call themselves a bishop. They'll say that they're righteous. They'll say that they're ordained of God. But meanwhile, they're self-willed. They go to church on the wrong day. They do all manner of evil. And they thank God for it. They're evil. The Lord has a judgment for them too. Read on. But a lover of hospitality. Go ahead. A lover of good men. Go ahead. Sober, just, holy, temperate. So what are we showing here? That God's government, there's already prerequisites. Matter of fact, let's get that Deuteronomy 1 and 15. The same way it's being described in Titus, 
is the same way it was established during the time of Moses. Let's get that. Deuteronomy 1 and 15. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 15. Go ahead. So I took the chief of your tribe. So I took those men who had great ability. Read. Wise men. Go ahead. And known. So God doesn't just choose some off-the-street scrub. He don't, he don't choose no jailhouse preacher. He don't choose no uh, 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 candy store deacon. No. He chooses wise men. Where does their wisdom come from? It comes from them separating from a self-willed nature of the world and putting on God's commandments in their mind to bring forth just judgment. Read on. And known and made them heads over you. And made them. The Lord made them heads over the congregation. Read on. Captains over thousands. Go ahead. Captains over hundreds. Go ahead. And captains over fifties. Go ahead. And captains over tens. Uh-huh. And officers among your tribes. You emphasized that thing pretty nice just now. He was like, captain over tens. I'm a captain of ten. All praise to the most high. Read on. And I charge your judges at that time. And you know what? We should feel like that. Because the Lord has redeemed us from all manner of wickedness in the world. Shoot. Some of us were captains of gangs. Some of us were presidents of, 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 of um, um, what you call them, Greek letter organizations. All manner of sorcery, wickedness. We, uh, what they call them, worthy matrons and worthy patrons of, of uh, the Mason, uh, Masons. All, all, we were all types of dignitaries in the world of straight evil. But as soon as we come into the Lord's truth, we despise government for some odd reason. Shoot, some of us barely was the school uh, uh, class president. But in that office, you demanded respect. You received respect. Even dignitaries above you gave you respect because you had authority in that system. But somehow we lose all sight when we come into this truth. The most glorious gospel, now we don't understand what government is. We despise it. So if you despise this government, understand that you actually despise yourself receiving salvation. There are certain hands that the Lord is sending his angels to encamp round about to deliver. And as long as you are around them and get in that spirit, the Lord will deliver you. And th shoot, these men are anointed of the Lord. Read on. And I charge your judges at that time, uh -huh. saying, hear the causes between your brethren. So watch this. The Lord charged them. When we're charged with something, that means you're indebted to do it. So sitting at a leadership table is not just some uh, uh, we get our plates first or, or, or just some fly by night uh, uh, um, exaltation or promotion for, for to make a friendship. No, we are charged by the Lord. If we don't do the Lord's work, the Lord will kill us. We understand that thing. Do you understand that thing? Because your day coming. Your day is coming. If you're a man in this truth, you're not meant to be a student just sitting in the congregation. No, you are to raise up and be a leader amongst your people and not be self-willed. Have all these qualifications of the Lord so that you can be a part of the, the delivering of your people. But read on. And judge righteously. Judge righteously. Read on. Between every man and his brother. Go ahead. And the stranger that is with, that is with him. Go ahead. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. So the Lord don't have no respect of persons. Neither should the men that the Lord set up over his government. No respecter of persons in judgment. No respecter. So if that means your wife, she can get judged too. That means your, your, your day one, A1, he can get judged too. And that's how you when you when we even look at our organization and we see our leadership dealing with judgment, we've seen bishops, deacons, captains, officers. So everybody from the top down, no one is exempt from God's judgment. And it is best that we have a government full of righteous and just judges to make sure that we actually get the kingdom that we're seeking. So when we see those judgments, who are we to speak evil against that thing? The Lord is showing that he is really amongst us when we judge righteously. Read on. 
but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. So there are small matters that got to get dealt with. There are great matters that got to be dealt with. Read on. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man. So leaders can't be fearful. We can't be bashful. We can't be subverted by anything or, or taken off balance. We have to stand up boldly to do just judgment in, in uh, the name of the Lord. Read on. For the judgment is God's. Judgment is God's. It's not man's. So he that despises, don't despise man. You actually despise God. Read on. And the cause that is too hard for you. So there are some things that a captain of 10 just can't handle. Captain of 10 ain't, ain't, ain't permitted to counsel a situation. They can listen in on counsel, grow their discernment, right? But if they are presumptuous, they will try to counsel. But then they still have the charge of the Lord upon them. Then they went against God's government. So now you've jacked up the households of 10 men and 10 women, 10 sets of children. If we do thing outside, anything outside of God's government and God's appointment, we're actually destroying not only ourselves in that pride, that vain glory, that filthy lucre, but we're also destroying those lives that we were made responsible for. That's why the Lord charges his leaders. Finish that off. And the cause that is too hard for you. Go ahead. Bring it unto me, uh -huh. and I will hear it. So the Lord will hear it when we bring those things to him. When we acknowledge, hey, Lord, I I'm not fit to deal with that. Show me how to deal with this situation. Help me understand. Let me go get counsel from my leaders, those that are above me, to make sure that I'm not doing anything of my own will, but that all things are ordered by your will, Lord. These are the things that we really have to be mindful of. Matter of fact, quick sidebar. Let's get uh, Sirach 34 and 19. Sirach 34 and 19. Because these able men have certain experiences that we don't have. So let, let's get that. Sirach chapter 34, verse 19. Yes. Verse 19. The Most High is not pleased. I'm sorry. The, the, Sirach 34. And man will try, uh, I'm sorry. Is that what I want? Verse 9. Yeah, verse 9. I said 19. Excuse me. Verse 9. A man that have traveled know of many things. Uh-huh. And he that have experience. Hath what? Hath much experience will declare wisdom. So much experience will declare wisdom. This is why we have elders, we have bishops that travel the world. We have captains, deacons that are traveling the, the four corners of the earth. Not only do they have the understanding of the scriptures, but they also have the understanding of the scriptures matched with prophecies being fulfilled through their lives. So when, no, when our elders come back and bring their stories and bring their experiences to us, we should be learning, learning from our elders enough to increase in faith. And continue pushing the mission forward. Let's get that in Sirach 6. and uh, Is that it? Verse 10. This is what I wanted too. Verse 10. Verse 10. Uh-huh. He that have no experience knoweth little. He that hath no experience knoweth very little. Not saying you don't know anything at all. You have certain experiences. But in this truth, you know, there, there are some people coming into the body 50, 60, 70 years old saying that they're elders simply because they have gray hair upon their head. That doesn't make you an elder in this truth. You're barely knowing how to keep the Passover, barely knowing how to wear fringes correctly, barely knowing how to keep your house in order, because some of these 50, 60, 70-year-old men let their wife rule all of their life. Message. So that is not of God. Your wife is self-willed. And you self-willed uh, enough uh, not to take your balls back like the Lord said. So get your mind right. Get your mind right. Leaving your balls in your wife's purse, that's self will You want to leave them there. God want to give them back to you. I ain't mean to make that sidebar. But verse 10 again. He that have no experience knoweth little. But he that have traveled is full of prudence. He that hath traveled is full of prudence. Much understanding, much wisdom, much experience comes from traveling and doing the work. But in this gospel, you can only go do the work if you're doing the work at home. If you're following and, and knowing how to follow order at home. So where do we get that from? Get Sirach 6 and 32. 
Sirach chapter 6, verse 32. Go ahead. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. If you want, if you desire, if you desire to follow the ways of the Lord, you can be taught how to do that thing. Read on. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. If we will apply thy mind. I want you to jump down to, just keep reading, keep reading. We're going to read through this fast. Verse 33. Go ahead. If thou love to hear, Go ahead. thou shalt receive understanding. Go ahead. If thou bow th thine ear, thou shalt be wise. Go ahead. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. Go ahead. Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape. So this is how you follow and begin to understand the order of the Lord. By getting and standing in the multitude of the elders, listening to their discourses, listening to their experiences. A lot of times in the experiences that I've had listening to the elders, you hear about those things that they used to do that they said that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Or you'll see a brother getting blasted for a mistake he making. Or you go, I've even seen where the elders saved a brother from making a mistake. But that's what the order of the Lord does. It preserves us. It pulls us, it pulls the godly away from temptations. And then because they see your willingness to follow the order, then the leadership actually look out for you. They say, you know what? I remember that brother. He was battling that decision he had to make. So let's make sure we look out for him. Matter of fact, we gonna, this is what we're going to do. We're going to travel down there to see him. That, that's actually happened. Where bishops make a pop-up just to check on certain spirits in the congregation, to make sure that their well-being is still being maintained. This is the type of government that the Lord has always desired to set up amongst our people. But if we, if we despise that thing and desire to be self-willed, we'll never have salvation. We'll never have it. But watch this. We're going to get it, and you'll just be rooted out of it. That's why I said they shall be utterly cut off. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Let's get, uh, that's all I want on that. That's all I want on that. That's all I want. Now, oh, I'm sorry. Verse 36. I'm sorry. Verse 36. Verse 36. Go ahead. And if thou seest a man of understanding. If you see a man of wisdom. Go ahead. Get thee but times unto him. Go ahead. And let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Because the man of the Lord. The men of the Lord, the government of the Lord will always give instructions that are best fit for your well-being. So, let, but let's see what presumptuous nature will bring. Let's get first Maccabees chapter five, verse 16. 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 Go ahead. Now, when Judas and the people heard these words, there assembled a great congregation together to consult what they should do for their brethren that, that were in trouble uh -huh. and assaulted of them. So watch this. Judas of the Maccabean lineage heard the words that another nation was going to wage war on, their, on his people. Right. Then the congregation the assembly of the righteous came together and they were consulting what they should do to save their brethren. What they should do to save their brethren. Our people are always in distress. And we do need, the Lord is looking for leaders to arise up to teach the people and inspire the people to go save the rest of their brethren who are being assaulted by the ways of this world. But read on. Then said Judas unto Simon, his brother, Go ahead. Choose thee out men, and go and deliver thy brethren that are in Galilee. Go ahead. For I and, and Jonathan, my brother, will go into the country 
of Galead. Galead. So, don't that sound familiar as to what we just read in Deuteronomy? Choose you out men to go and deliver thy brethren. Choose you out men to set up this government that we may have order when we go to deliver our brethren. But read on. So he left Joseph, the son of Zacharias, uh -huh. and, and Azarias, captains of the people. Go ahead. With the remnant of the host in Judea to keep it. So Judas and his brother left orders. He, not, not only did he designate men to be in the government, he also gave them orders to follow. In a government, you get a certain post, a certain office, a, cer a certain place to govern, and you get orders to make sure that you govern it well, not just for yourself, but for the well-being of the nation at large or the congregation that you are serving. Read on. Unto whom he gave commandment, saying, Take ye the charge of this people. Take you the charge of this people. Y'all are captains over the people. Take the charge of the people. Be indebted to the servitude of the people. Read. And see that ye make not war against the heathen until the time that we come again. So don't go to war until me and my brothers come back. Don't go to war until me and my brothers come back. But that presumptuous nature eventually takes over a spirit because it's already in you as an iniquity. It eventually takes over. So let's see what that looks like. Jump down to verse 55. Verse 55. Now, what time as Judas and uh, Jonathan were in the land of, of Galilee, and Simon, his brother in Galilee, before Ptolemaeus. Ptolemaeus. Go ahead. Joseph, the son of Zacharias and Azarias, captains of the garrisons, heard of the valiant acts and warlike deeds which they had done. So Joseph and Azariah were back at home in Judea, and they were hearing about the great victories that Judas and his brothers were accomplishing. They were hearing about those things. It's just like a news report. You, Oh, man, the brother's doing good over there in that school. Brother's doing well. Oh, praises to the most high. But presumption comes in. Read on. Wherefore, they said, let us also give us an, get us a name. Wherefore, they said, they already had their orders. But they said amongst themselves, let's go make us a name. Shoot, Judas and Simon and Jonathan, they think they somebody, man. We, we can go get us a name, too. We're going to go out there, I'm sure. Who we think he? I know he made us a captain, but I'm going to go do my own thing. Okay, read on. And go fight against the heathen that are round about us. Oh, we're going to fight the heathen too, man. Shoot, I, I can whoop a couple of Edomites behind. I can whoop a couple of Ishmaelites, man. Shoot, last time we went to war with them, boy, shoot, I killed three, 30 people myself. Let's go make us a name. Shoot, they ain't going to be the only ones who get a name in the Lord, who get a memorial, who get statues, various things, whatever. Whatever their, their vain thought went to, they said, let's go make us a name. Presumptuous were they. Those instructions were appropriate for their livelihood. But let's see what judgment falls upon them. Read on. So when they had given charge unto the garrison that was with them. Go ahead. They went toward Jamnia. Uh-huh. Then came Gorg. Gorgias. Gorgias and his men out of the city to fight against them. So you want war? You get war. Read on. And so it was that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight. They ran scared. They didn't have the power of the Lord with them. Why? Because they despised the government that had the power of the Lord. You, you, you were safe at home. You were safe knowing that hold, uh, safe in holding your post. Stay home till big brother get back. Then we go out into the street. That was for your safety. But Joseph and Azariah, they, they said they wanted to make themselves a name. They did. But it also said they were put to flight. They did make a name. <laughs> Read on. And pursued unto the borders of Judea. Go ahead. And there was slain that day of the people of Israel about 2,000 men. So not only did they get themselves killed. They also got 2,000 men killed as well. So, yes, they made a name, but they made a name despising government. They were presumptuous, self-willed. They despised the word of the Lord. They despised their protection. 
and they got their nation put to death. So they should have been going to deliver their brethren, but they actually delivered their brethren to the hand of the enemy to be put to death. All because of being self-willed, wanting to go make themselves a name. <laughs> Read on. Thus was there a great overthrow. So now there is a great overthrow. The post they should have been holding is now weakened because they went out and did something they were not commanded to do. Read on. Among the children of Israel. Go ahead. Because they were not obedient unto Ju uh, Judas and his brethren. Go ahead. But thought to do some valiant act. So they thought that they were actually despising Judas and his brethren by not obeying what they said. Not obeying the office they should have been fulfilling. But read the next verse, and I want you to read it slow. Read. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those Go ahead. by whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. So the Lord already designed the Maccabees brothers to be the hand that deliverance was given to Israel through. But Joseph and Azarias, in their presumptuous nature, they said, we're going to make us a name. You would have made a better name just by sitting in Judea, doing as you were told, and waiting for Judas and his brothers to come back. But because of your self-willed nature, you're going to make a name all right, but it ain't for nothing good. You thought you knew better. But God says that he already designed that seed that he was going to give deliverance to Israel through. Read verse 63 and 64. Verse 63. Go ahead. How be it, the man Judas and his brethren were greatly renowned in the sight of all Israel. Go ahead. And of all the heathen, wheresoever their name was heard of. Go ahead. And so much as the people assembled unto them with joyful acclamations. acclamations. And that's because when the righteous are in rulership, the people do rejoice. The people do rejoice when they have that, that, that well-set leader. That leader who is meant to care for their needs and deal with them properly. We know exactly uh, exactly what we're doing when we go against God's leadership. We know exactly. All right. So uh, let's get Ecclesiastes. Uh, let's go into some other presumptuous sins real quick. Real quick. I want Ecclesiastes. So this is Rock 23, verse 16. So these men, Joseph and Azarias. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were. They knew what they were given to do. They knew what they were supposed to do. But because of that presumptuous nature, being self-willed, they ran out, did their own thing, and got judged and utterly cut off for it. So presumptuous sin goes back to we know what we are doing, and it will destroy you and everything around you. Right. So let's talk about backdoor marriages being presumptuous sin. That happens all the time. Read that. Sirach chapter twenty-three verse sixteen. Two sorts of men multiply sin. Go ahead. And the third will bring wrath. A hot mind is as a burning fire. Go ahead. It will never be quenched till it, till it be consumed. A hot mind is a burning fire. Read. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till he have kindled a fire. A, a fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease. Will never cease multiplying those sins because you know it's something you shouldn't be doing but because it's so fun it's according to your will that's what you want to do so therefore you multiply you find new people to join you in with it or join in with you read on all bread is sweet to a whoremonger uh-huh he will not leave off till he die he won't leave off till he die he won't leave off till he die but Understand, the Lord has a judgment for those who don't want to leave off from their sin. The Lord has a judgment. Read on. A man that breaketh wedlock, saying thus in his heart. Go ahead. Who seeth me? I am compassed about with darkness. Uh-huh. The walls cover me. Go ahead. And nobody seeth me. Go ahead. What, what need I to fear? Stop right there. A lot of times when we're in the midst of various sins, and right now I know we're talking about the back door marriage. People say that we don't, they, nobody sees us right now. But somehow, after post-nut clarity, <laughs> everything gets seen. Everything gets seen. W what gets seen is the police being called out, people getting cut. 
What what I've also noticed in the presumptuous sin of, of backdoor marriages, it don't all, like we said, it don't just destroy that person because some people actually do get married after the backdoor situation. But the marriage is not peaceful. The children that are involved never live peaceful lives. They actually become destroyed, and some of them go and do backdoor marriages even while the, the family's trying to redeem themselves. Or the children's spirits become destroyed because of that thing. We got to be mindful. The Lord is showing us what is permitted and appropriate, but when we step outside of that, we don't realize how much we're actually destroying in God's mercy. We don't understand that thing, but we don't. The Most High will not remember my sin. That's what you're, that's what you're hoping. But because you're in your ignorance, you're in your uh, presumed ignorance. Let me not make that classification. Because this is what you're trying to justify in your sin, you're saying the Lord won't remember that. He's going to grant me more grace. He's going to grant me more mercy. But watch this. Get Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11, just to prove that point. You, you're, you're fooling yourself underneath a strong delusion. You're believing the lie that you've told yourself as you try to make your sin okay. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. Go ahead. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Uh-huh. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So a presumptuous person, their heart, their mind, their soul is fully set to do evil. So much so that they will even justify themselves and use God's name to help them justify it. Surely God won't remember my sin. Surely he won't. Let's go back to uh, Sirach 23. And we'll start at verse 19. Go back to verse 19. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 23, verse 19. Uh-huh. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men. Go ahead. And knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Go ahead. Beholding all the ways of men. Uh-huh. And considering the most secret parts. So watch this. That just, that just goes to show how reprobate a presumptuous person is leaving themselves to be. Presumptuous sin is borderline, uh, like nine toes in type uh, uh, reprobate. If you don't get, gather yourself together, you're going to fall into it headlong. So we got to be careful with that thing. The Lord has given us the commandments that we may rescue ourselves, acknowledge his right ways. But if we're presumptuous, we're only going to fall into that sin. So this is what we're going to do. Lying tongue, a lying tongue, a deceitful and with deceitful and malicious intentions. Get that in uh, history of Susanna. I'm going to just leave that there. A lying tongue with deceitful and malicious intentions. Because what we're going to read in the history of Susanna is you got a righteous sister and two wicked elders. These two wicked elders set up the scenario, set up the jury, used their power and authority to condemn an innocent soul. However, the judgment of the Lord came in and rectified all things. Let's get that. Verse 7. History of Susanna, verse 7. Uh huh. Now, when the people departed away at noon, uh huh. Susanna went into her husband's garden to walk. Go ahead. And the two elders saw her going in every day. Go ahead. And walking, so that their lust was inflamed So these two her. elders had a lust, a temptation on them. And it was inflamed. It kept growing day by day. Now, what should we do when we start to recognize our iniquities are trying to lift themselves up? We should begin to confess. We should begin to repent. We should begin to self-examine. Right? Examine those ways that we were going off. Read on. And they perverted their own mind. They perverted their own mind. They justified their lust within themselves. They didn't want to repent of it. Read on. And turned away their eyes. Turned away their eyes from repentance. Read. That they might not look unto heaven. Go ahead. Nor remember just judgment. They didn't want to remember just judgment. They despise the word of the Lord. They reproach the judgment of the Lord. Read on. And albeit they both were wounded with her love. They were wounded. They said wounded. Ah, dog. 
wounded with her love. She, when did she love them? In their mind. Their minds were perverted. And it says they were wounded with her love. Dang. Read on. Yet there's not, not one show another his grief. Nobody, sh they didn't show one another their sin. They, they should have been grieved at their sin, but they didn't. Read on. For they were ashamed to declare their lust. So wait a minute. They, it says they were ashamed to declare their lust. They knew they would have had to deal with a judgment just in, in itself. But they said they were ashamed to declare their lust. Read. That they desired to have to do with her. Go Now jump down to verse 19. So they should have been ashamed and repented. But they were ashamed to a point where they justified themselves and fell headlong into more and more malicious sin. Read. Verse, verse 19. Ni verse 19. Now when the maids were gone forth, the two elders rose up and ran unto her, saying, Go ahead. Behold. The garden doors are shut that no man sh can see us. Go ahead. And we are in love with thee. Go ahead. Therefore, consent unto us and lie with us. So now opportunity, now they've agreed upon their sin, and now opportunity shows forth, and now they're convincing this woman or trying to entice this woman into laying with them. We are in love with thee. Consent to us. Lie with us. Meanwhile, they've been handling suits at her husband's house all this time. This, so uh, we call it, this your homeboy. And yet you're trying to run a train on his wife. Let's just keep it real. Let's keep it in terms that we understand. Read on. If thou wilt not, we will bear witness against thee. And if you don't lie with us, we're going to lie on you. We're going to make sure we've already planned this out in our minds. Our minds are already perverted. We're already self-willed. We're going to make sure that we get out of this scot-free. You don't know who we are. We elders, and there's two of us here. We already know how we're going to lie on you. When the matter of two or three are established, <laughs> you dead, stoned up. So you might as well lie with us. Read on. That a young man was with thee, and therefore thou didst send away thy maids Go from ahead. thee. Then Susanna sighed and said, I am straightened on every side. For if I do this thing, it is death unto me. Uh huh. And if I and if I do it not, I cannot escape your hands. So Susanna, she understood she was in a, 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 a straight. She was like, yo, either I'm going to serve God or I'm going to have to serve these men. Susanna chose to serve God. Even, and this goes to show, even women must understand not to despise God's government. Even women got to understand that thing. Read on. It is better for me to fall into your hands and not do it than to sin in the sight of the Lord. My, she said, my sin is not going to be something I've premeditated or accepted. I don't accept what's about to happen to me. And watch this. Where there is a law. There is a way to escape sin. So what does Susanna do? Read. With that, Susanna cried with a loud voice. Uh-huh. And the two elders cried out against her. So that loud crying woman is a mechanism. That loud crying woman is a mechanism to save you. But make sure, black woman, that you ain't using that loud crying voice against God's government. Man. Because we got sisters in the body who will call the Lord's government evil. Th these men are bringing forth judgment, and you mad. So mad that when it's time to break bread and wine with the congregation, you say, I don't like none of these niggas. I'm going to bring my own bread and own wine. So you need to under <laughs> you might want to think to yourself, what bread am I breaking? Am I breaking the bread of Christ? Am, am I honoring the body of Christ? Or am I showing that I'm a seed of Satan? Be mindful what we're doing. Be mindful of the presumptuous sin or that sin that's raising itself up in you. We got to be mindful as a people. These are things that actually go on within the body of Christ. So let's keep reading. Jump down. This is all I want on that. Uh, get down to verse 60. So this is after. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Where do we leave off? That was verse 24. Jump down to verse 51. Jump down to verse 51. Verse 51. Uh-huh. Then said Daniel unto them, put these two aside one far from another, and I will examine them. So God always sets his leaders up to examine matters properly, to give, bring, and bring forth just judgment, right? So read on. So when they were put asunder one from another, Go ahead. he called one of them and said unto him, uh -huh. O thou, O thou that art waxen old and wicked, Go ahead. now thy sins which thou hast committed aforetime are come to light. So when you're waxen in your sin, you've learned to justify it, you condone it, you gain other people to join in it with you, you, you are now waxen bold in your sin and now you in that presumptuous mind state no correction can come against you the only correction that's fit for you is death read on verse 53 for thou hast pronounced false judgment for thou hast pronounced false judgment these men aren't moving like the men of god read on and have condemned the innocent go ahead and has let the guilty go free go ahead albeit the lord saith the innocent and righteous shalt, shalt thou not slay. Go ahead. Now then, if thou hast seen her, tell me, under what tree sawest thou them companying it together? Go ahead. Who answered under a mastic tree? So now they're being tried. They're being examined. The word, their, their word is being examined by the judgment of God. And they're going to be found to be liars. Read on. And Daniel said very well. Thou hast lied against thine own head. They have lied against their own soul. Read. For even now the angel of God hath received the sentence of God to cut thee in two. So we got to keep in mind that our angels are writing down every little thing that we're doing. They know those small spirits that we're overcoming, those, those small things that we, small matters within our own spirit that we got to overcome. They know the greater matters in the spirit that we got to overcome. They know when we're putting our body into subjection. They know when we're growing in the spirit. So they're writing down all these things. But when our judgment falls, whatever that, that last thing, those last few things written, those last actions that proclaim what our judgment is going to be, those angels already have it written, and they already got a sentence for us. Read on. So he put him aside and commanded to bring the other. Go ahead. And said unto him. Go ahead. Thou, O thou seed of Canaan. 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 Go ahead. And not of Judah. Go ahead. Beauty hath deceived thee. Beauty hath deceived thee. Vanity has taken over your life. Read on. And lust hath perverted thine heart. You fall and pray to your own lust and temptations. Read on. Thus have ye dealt with the daughters of Israel. Go ahead. And they for fear accompanied, accompanied, get it together, accompanied with you. So, and they for fear accompanied with you. They were abiding by the government of man rather than the government of God. So you might have caught some people slipping, but judgment is upon you. Read on. But the daughter of Judah would not abide your wickedness. The daughter of Judah. An upright sister would not abide by this. Read on. Now, therefore, tell me, under what tree didst thou take them a company? Go ahead. Together? Who answered under a home tree? Go ahead. Then said Daniel unto him, well, thou hast also lied against thine own head. Lied against your own soul. So that lying that's rooted in deceitfulness or deception with malicious intent, the Lord says those things are rooted in presumptuous sin as well because you had to premeditate that thing. If you know anything about the legal system, a premeditated murder gets more time than a, a manslaughter or a regular first-degree murder because it took time and it took skill, it took strategy to line that thing up. It took uh, 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 you putting together the alibi a certain way, setting the stage for you to walk away scot-free. Meanwhile, your hands were bloody with evil. Read on. For the angel of God waiteth with the sword Go ahead. to cut thee in two, Go ahead. that he may destroy you. Uh -huh. With with that all, the, the assembly cried out with a loud voice Go ahead. and praised God, who saveth them that trusteth in him. Go ahead. And they arose against the two elders, for Daniel had convicted them of false witness by their own mouth. By what? 
by their own mouth. So the thing about presumptuous sin, you will be so far gone into your own justification, you'll actually hang yourself by your own mouth. Understand that. You will learn how to justify your sin so much, you actually tell everybody else how wrong you are in your own speech. Read on. And according to the law of Moses, they did unto them in such sort as they maliciously intended to do to their neighbor. Because in that presumptuous nature, nature, when you despise government, there's some rooted hatred, there's some rooted pride, there's some rooted guile in you that is being tried by the Lord. However, because of your malicious intent, wisdom can't reside with you from the beginning. So therefore, you'll continue in your evil way and you'll find yourself utterly cut off. Read on. And they put them to death. Thus the innocent blood was saved the same day. So watch this. The Lord being compassion, compassionate to us all, if he has to put us to death in our sin, it shows that our intentions weren't to ever change. But that's why we have Christ as an advocate. But what is Christ going to advocate for us keeping the commandments, exhibiting that wisdom of the scriptures, of actually trying to root out and examine ourselves enough to apply those scriptures to overcome those small things that we battle and those great things that we battle, right? But we got to be mindful that our own speech and actions will condemn us. Let's get that first. We almost done. First Samuel 1 and 23. Let's get that. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 23. So we have to examine ourselves. God is going to weigh out our actions. Your, your thoughts and your, your speeches is the beginning of it, where you should be able to recognize those things. You should be able to look in the scripture and say, is my thought correct? Is this the way of the Lord or am I going off? If you can't recognize it there, then your actions are going to be weighed. It's going to show forth in your actions. Read on. First Samuel chapter, chapter 1, verse 23. Uh -huh. And Elkanah, her is husband. Is that what I want? Is that 1 and 23? Yeah. Or you want First Samuel two, two and three? I'm sorry. First Samuel chapter two verse three. Go ahead. Talk no more, so exceeding proudly. So we can't boast ourselves in our own talk. Read on. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Actually, another synonym for presumptuous goes into arrogance. Being presumptuous means you're arrogant in the ways that you are partaking in that go against what is permitted or appropriate. You're arrogant against the, those laws of God. Read on. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. God is a God of knowledge. Read. And by him, actions are weighed. By God, our actions will be weighed. Matter of fact, let's pull that up just so you can see that. Let's get this, def just to show this definition. Get Psalm 51, verse 17. Pull that up. And I'll read it as you find it. It says, full of or characterized by or showing presumption or readiness to presume in conduct or thought as by saying or doing something without right or permission. Synonyms, arrogant, fresh, audacious, impertinent, unwarranted or impertinently bold or forward, unwarranted. It doesn't fit the bill of God's government. It doesn't fit the bill of the order uh, 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 that we're establishing within this truth. Presumptive. Arrogant. But a lot of our people get caught up in their arrogance. They get caught up in uh, 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 their immodesty. Oh, my gosh. Dealing with the black woman today, immodesty, being presumptuous. Matter of fact, saw a video clip, real a sidebar. Saw a video clip where a young man was telling a young lady, I don't want you dressing like a whore in a nutshell. Meanwhile, in her presumption, she's trying to convince this man what kind of standards he should allow on the wife that he wants to wear his name first and then also be a reflection of him. She wants him to change his thought of how he wants to be reflected. What the heck is going on here? Boy, but no way, boy. that's what presumptuous people do. They want to pervert the ways of God, and they want to make their ways above God's ways. That's why they are self-willed.
But then they'll tell you, you crazy. You're dealing with me unjustly. You don't have the love of the people. What kind of leader are you? They'll say things like that. But the Lord has a judgment for you. The Lord rebuke you. Now, go back. Psalm 51. What kind of spirit does the Lord want to see his children have? We're almost done. Verse 17. Psalm 51, verse 17. Psalm chapter 51, verse 17. Go ahead. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken spirit. A broken spirit. A broken spirit, you're going to humble down. Humility and arrogancy are not the same. They're, they're complete opposites of one another. An arrogant spirit ain't going to listen to the Lord. An arrogant spirit going to do what they want to do. But the Lord wants to see who's going to be humble. Who's going to be meek like Moses. Who's going to follow commands like Judas. Who's going to uh, uh, spiritually give themselves over to the will of the Lord like Susanna. Read on. A broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. The Lord will not despise those things. A contrite heart and a broken spirit. That's what we all need to have in our repentance. If you're repenting, you're sincerely repenting, you're going to have that broken and contrite heart when you do get correction. When you do see yourself stepping out of the way. This is how we fix it. This is how we actually give honor to the government that the Lord is setting up with us and allowing us to be a part of. Get that in 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. This is how we must redirect ourselves. Go ahead. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Go ahead. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to so, salvation. Go ahead. Not to be repented of. So godly sorrow is the type of sorrow that you will open the Bible up. You will find those scriptures that actually apply to your sin. You'll actually be broken and contrite when you read those scriptures, realizing how far off you're going. Or considering the last end of how all far off you could be. We have to look in the scriptures and say, I have to fix it. That's where you get that broken and contrite spirit from. And godly saw is the only way to be redirected to salvation. There's going to be many things that we have to overcome. But if we don't learn to have godly sorrow, we'll learn to have worldly sorrow and we'll justify our sin. Read the next part. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. The sorrow of the world will make everybody around you evil and you're the only righteous person. You're the only righteous person in the congregation. But everybody else is evil. That's worldly sorrow. And before long, the Lord is going to cut you off and send you back into the world because you are a spot and a blemish in the feast of, of the Lord. You are a spot. Be mindful of that thing. Philippians 2 and 12. Philippians 2 and 12. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, uh -huh. but now much more in my absence. Go ahead. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So it goes right back to that fear of the Lord. Either you're going to fear the Lord or you're going to despise the Lord. It's one or the other. But either way it goes, we need to have that spiritual integrity. Spiritual integrity enough to study the scriptures, study our sin, fix our problems. Learn to go unto our elders who are meant to help us and meant to uh, pray for us and pray for our infirmities, in the, even in this truth. Pray for us. Deal with us. Teach us. Instruct us that we may understand better. But if we stay in that presumptuous manner, what's going to be that judgment? Hebrews 10, verse 26. Almost done. Hebrews 10, verse 26. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Go ahead. For if we sin willfully. If we sin presumptuously, read. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. Go ahead. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So, if you're going to say you believe on Christ and you sin presumptuously, you're self-willed and you're only going to justify your actions, what sacrifice what dying on the cross, what remission of sins do you look for? There is none because you actually overturn it by your presumptuous ways. Read on. Verse 27. Go ahead. But a certain fearful looking 
for of judgment and fiery indignation. Go ahead. Which shall devour the adversary. Go ahead. He that despised Moses' law. He that what? He that despised Moses' law. The law was given to Moses by God. So if you dispose Moses, you actually despise God underneath that covenant that was made with him. That we agreed to under that mount saying, all the things you command us, we will do. So when you despise Moses, what would happen? God without mercy. There was no mercy. Whatever your sin was, if there was no atonement for that thing, you were put to death. Read on. Under two or three witnesses. Go ahead. Of how much sore, sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy? Go ahead. Who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant. Go, so how much sore of a punishment should you be waiting on in the judgment when you've been given grace enough to fix the things that you know are an issue? You see the issues, but do you justify yourself in the issue or do you fix it? Do you go to the scriptures to get clarity on that thing so that you can understand how to follow God's order, how to be a part of God's order, how to display more charity in God's order? We got to be mindful of those things. Read on. Wherewith he was sanctified in uh -huh. an unholy thing. So the things that we were sanctified by, now we count them as an unholy thing. Everybody's evil except me. Read on. And have done despite unto the Unto the spirit of grace. So we even despise the spirit of grace that was given to us that we may fix ourselves. We got to be mindful of what we're doing. All right. First Peter 2, verse 1 and 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. So we got to be mindful of how we're moving even in, the, in this truth. Because in this truth, we are examples to those who are without. There should be no person coming into our sanctuaries and not understanding what repentance fully looks like. There should be no isms, no schisms. There should be no division. We should all understand this thing the same way. And if we do understand it the same way, we got to root out that presumptuous nature in us all. We got to humble down our spirits. Humility is the key to obtaining salvation. Because through it, we'll learn patience. Through it, we'll learn how to deal righteously with our brothers. Right? Go ahead and get that. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. First Peter, yeah. good. First, Go ahead. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. So we have to lay aside the malicious nature. Read on. And all guile. And all guile, foolishness, lies. And hypocrisy. And hypocrisies, read. And envies. And envyings. Because sometimes you despise government because you want it to be you. Just like what we read with Joseph and Ezra. I want to make me a name. Read on. And all evil speaking. And all evil speaking. We got to lay aside all these things so that we can fully step into the order that God is setting for us. So that we can fully lay aside that presumptuous nature. Read on. As newborn babes. As newborn babes. Renewing our mind. We have to renew our minds. Read. Desire the sincere milk of the word. Go ahead. That ye may grow thereby. Go ahead. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. The way that we taste and see that the Lord is gracious is exactly what we read out of Psalm 119. These precepts, these laws are sweet in our mouth. We should understand the grace and mercy that the Lord is giving to us in these last days. But that we also have to be broken and contrite to know that there are certain spirits that we have to root out of ourselves. Last one, Titus chapter 3, verse 1. And we're going to read down to verse 8. Titus chapter 3, verse 1. Go ahead. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities uh -huh. and powers to obey magistrates. So what what is principalities, powers, and magistrates. This goes into government. It goes into government. Read on. To be ready to every good work. Good works is keeping of God's laws, maintaining God's orders, following God's laws, uploading those things in yourself that you may bring forth good works and be a good example. Read on. To speak evil of no man. So we should learn not to speak evil of any man. Read. To be no brawlers. To be no brawlers. Read. But gentle. But gentle. Learning how to deal with your people in a righteous manner. Learning how to give that grace. Be long-suffering amongst your people. 
But if you're self-willed, you will want everybody to deal with you righteously and you want to lord over everybody. Whether you're in a position as a leader or you you the sister over here just mad because don't nobody want to eat your bread recipe. Message. Read on. Showing all meekness unto all men. So showing all meekness, submission, humility. When we do those things, when we take on that spirit of meekness, we won't be seen as arrogant when correction comes out. We won't be seen as self-willed when things are set in order. We won't be uh, found by the Lord to be presumptuous of mind and fully cut off when judgment hits the earth. Read on. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Because all of us have been given the grace of God. We were all sometimes foolish. Read on. Disobedient. Uh-huh. Deceived. Serving diverse lusts. We have various temptations. Read on. And pleasures. And those, some of those pleasures, those, those lusts, were things that we justified. We had rhyme and reason to do it constantly. We were all some were all sometimes foolish, living by presumptuous sin. Read on. Living in malice. We and lived in malice. Read. And envy. And envy. Hateful and hating one another. So that's what caused us to be or be a disturbance amongst our own people. That's what caused us to have so much disorder, disarray amongst our people. But God in these last days is giving us back order. Who are we to become presumptuous thinking we can save ourselves? Read on. But after that, the kindness and love of God, uh -huh. our Savior toward man appeared. Our Savior. Our Savior. Our Savior showed us the way that we must follow. Our Savior has already followed the law, statutes, and commandments that we can look to the Gospels and understand, all right, if we follow Christ, this is how we obtain salvation. He gave us more understanding on how to keep these laws and stay out of sin. I know I have an opportunity if I just break, break my spirit by keeping God's laws. Read on. Not by works of righteousness. So it's nothing that we can do outside of ourselves that's going to bring forth righteousness. It's not going to be by animal sacrifice. And hell, some of us were the sacrifice for our sin. Because we were so so deep in the wickedness, we were the sacrifice. It was, That wasn't going to get us the kingdom, though. That wasn't going to get us the kingdom. Read on. Which we have done. Which we have done. Read. But according to his mercy. According to God's mercy. According to the mercy of God, he sent Christ to die for our sins that we may have remission of sins. If anybody's ever been to an oncologist, you know if cancer goes into remission, it stops growing. It actually goes back and you no longer deal with the growth of that uh, cancer cell. So the same thing with sin. The remission of sin, we learn to stop it growing, festering, becoming a, a nuisance to the body, and now it stops growing, it recedes, it ceases. You stop sinning. That's what the grace of Christ is all about. Read. He saved us uh -huh. by the washing of regeneration. Go ahead. And renewing of the Holy Ghost. Because we're able to renew our minds, root out those spirits, and follow God's will. Read. Which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Go ahead. That being justified by his grace, Go ahead. we should be made heirs according, according to the hope of eternal life. So now we're made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Read verse 8 and that's it. This is a faithful saying. This is a faithful saying. So a lot of us overcoming presumptuous sin, being presumptuous and, and, and uh, omitting order, or stepping outside of God's order, we got to increase in faith to know that the things that are in place, the things that are being set in place are the order of the Lord. This is a faithful saying when we learn how to do the first work or the good works that are lined up in the scriptures. When we learn how to follow those men and even the, uh, the sisters that are being designated to help guide and uh, uh, groom the spirits of sisters. Everybody is playing a part. We just got to fall in line and follow the order. Maintain the order. Read on. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Go ahead. That they which, which have believed. If you believe. If you believe. Read. In God might be careful to maintain good works. Be careful to maintain good works. Order. God is not the author of confusion. Read on. 
These things are good and profitable unto men. These things are good and profitable to men. So as we uh, close out, this was a class dealing with presumptuous are they uh, teaching and exposing that spirit of presumption, that spirit of being self-willed, despising government, speaking evil of dignities, and hating God's order. I pray that y'all uh, were edified by this class. I had reading for me today. Officer Emmanuel. All praise to the Most High. Shalom, Most High Christ. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 